the laws we have fought for and to expand the opportunities for those who don't have them today. If we think racism isn't alive in this country, look to Charleston. Go to Skid Row. The Voting Rights Advancement Act of 2015 would also give the feds more authority in the courts on voting matters and in requesting federal observers at the polls. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. The Southern Christian Leadership Conference of Southern California works to improve the conditions of poor and underserved populations. While a grassroots effort to battle South LA's crack cocaine epidemic has grown to inspire so much more. Gil Reyes reports from the 25th anniversary of the Community Coalition. South LA's Community Coalition marked a quarter century of service with singing, cheering, and the opening of an all new center. Community Coalition was founded by former doctor's assistant Karen Bass, who go on to serve in the state legislature and now in Congress. Taking aim at crack cocaine, her group originally focused on drug treatment and housing for addicts, then grew to also advocate for foster children, while pressuring the L.A. school board to pour more money into the maintenance of South L.A. schools. For leading the way, one of the new meeting rooms at the center is named after Congresswoman Bass. Nothing brought me the joy that I felt every day that I work at Community Coalition. And I'm always so honored that you asked me to come back and you asked me to visit. And now you named something after me? <laughs> Let me just thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. So to have these headquarters here means you don't have to go downtown or West LA to see one of the finest organizations work right here in the heart of LA. We hope that a lot of community centers are inspired by this project. Community Build is doing a project just down the street. Uh, Crenshaw Christian Center, also down the street, is talking about programs. And so we're very excited about what could happen here on Vermont in the 8th District. And what could happen over the next 25 years for a coalition that's thrived with the help of volunteers and donations. In South L.A., Gil Reyes for L.A. This Week. Besides Congresswoman Bass, new 8th District Councilman Marquise Harris-Dawson also got his political start as an activist with the Community Coalition. While lawmakers from all levels of government are banding together to fight a threat they say creates a danger in the sky, unmanned drones have already threatened firefighting efforts, and owners of the flying gadgets might soon find they are in a no-fly zone. Anna Marcos has the story. When a wildfire flares up, L.A. fire helicopters and aircraft take to the skies. But in ever-growing numbers, firefighting aircraft are getting grounded by a new threat in the air, drones, also known as unmanned aircraft systems. The United States Forest Service has tallied 13 wildfires in which drones interfered with firefighting aircraft this year. Although drones are used for police work, movie filming, and for other commercial reasons, more and more drone owners are now private hobbyists. More than 2 million drones were sold last year, with sales up 50 percent this year. City leaders have teamed up with state and federal lawmakers to come up with laws to stop the drones near wildfires and near areas like LAX. After several near misses just in the past few weeks, in which drones have been piloted above active wildfires, grounding tankers full of fire retardant, it's clear we have a major problem. According to the Federal Aviation Administration, there are nearly 200,000 aircraft in the sky in the U.S. at any one time. Potentially, that means drones could outnumber aircraft in our skies as we speak. Luckily, L.A. firefighters say they have not had to deal with drone interference yet. But in neighboring San Bernardino, firefighting efforts were grounded recently due to drones in the Cajon Pass fire. The presence of drones in the fire in the Cajon Pass allowed for the fire to spread because whenever drones are sighted near a fire site, the, the crew has to issue a complete ground stop. Which Someone could have lost their life, and that we cannot uh, stand for and will not stand for. Both state and federal leaders are now drafting regulations. The state laws could take effect later this year. I'm Anna Marcos for L.A. This Week.
And the community of Pacoima gets ready for El Nino. As Gil Reyes reports, a water storage system in the works aims to take advantage of the expected heavy rainfall. Whenever there's a major downpour, this stretch of Laurel Canyon Boulevard in Pacoima gets saturated with mud and rainwater. It comes up to my driveway. It's been taking trash cans. My other neighbor on the other side has to go and run them and keep them. And I have seen other people falling. That's why homeowner Anna Olvera and her neighbors support a new water recapturing project that aims to turn a negative into a positive. As these before and after photos show, city crews will be beautifying their flood prone sidewalk while adding several underground wells beneath the curb. Officials say the system will be able to collect up to 13 million gallons of stormwater each year. That, that's 13 million gallons of water less that we've got to purchase. It's 13 million gallons of water that's going to go to work right here in our community. Area Councilman Felipe Fuentes and company call it the Laurel Canyon Boulevard Green Street Project. Water will then be diverted to the San Fernando Groundwater Basin for future use instead of out into the ocean. The project expected to be completed in February 2016. And if you believe the preliminary weather reports, in time for the tail end of the upcoming El Nino season, which is expected to bring heavy rain across Southern California. We will have at least one or two wells in, in time to capture some of the earlier rains. And then throughout the rainy season, we will work and complete the project. Crews want 11 wells total. The cost, about $3 million. And it's a good payoff. It's actually, our investment is better than the price that we pay for purchased water. So this has a great payback for the citizens of L.A. While saving up for a rainy day. In Pacoima, Gil Reyes for L.A. This Week. City crews tell drivers along that stretch of Laurel Canyon to be patient and expect delays when construction begins in September. Well, San Pedro community members and city leaders are taking back their parks and improving neighborhoods by sharing a strong commitment to safety. What's your favorite part of the park? Uh, the tire swing. The tire swing. It's official. The tire swing at the newly renovated Alma Park in San Pedro is hands down the overall favorite among kids who came out recently with their families to cut the ribbon on the new and improved neighborhood park. We will change this city forever. I think we are doing it now. I think we're making the quality of life better. Um, but in its simplest form, it doesn't get any better than opening a new playground in a park. The improvements are part of an ongoing effort among city and community members to improve Alma and Rena parks and make them safer for park goers. Community members say for a long time, the park was a hotbed for people drinking, doing drugs and loitering. There was a real um, poor image for our community and uh, we started to feel it in the neighboring uh, houses. But over the last three years, the blight has slowly started to disappear thanks to the LAPD, the Department of Rec and Parks and the community working together to make the park a more inviting and safe place. And so far, it's worked. More children and young families have begun using the park because of new improvements, which include new playground equipment, surfacing, new fencing, benches, and walkways. The whole mood of this park has changed, and it's not only benefited just this park, but it's benefited the neighboring uh, community. So it's been a win-win for everybody. And city officials want to keep it that way. They're taking a tough stand against anyone who engages in inappropriate behavior at the park. We owe it to the families and the kids, and this is our park, and we will not put up with any of the nonsense, with any of the knuckleheads who think otherwise. Transforming a park into a place the whole community can enjoy. Well, people in Boyle Heights can breathe a little easier thanks to a new air treatment facility in their neighborhood. As Gil Reyes tells us, it's long overdue. For too long, people have had to endure foul odors coming from this area overlooking downtown 6th Street Bridge. I mean, every major highway crosses through there. Uh, it's surrounded by industry. Uh, the pollution, it's considered one of the most polluted uh, areas in terms of air quality in California. But Boyle Heights Councilman Jose Huizar says that's about to change. The opening of this artsy-looking air treatment facility and greenway space. Where we're taking some of the, the infrastructure that our city needs to build and we're actually going beyond to ensure that um, what we're building actually has a maximum benefit. City leaders say the nearly $18 million project will collect and remove sewer odor and other foul stenches coming from the area. The improvement spurred by a lawsuit filed by South L.A. residents fed up with neighborhood air pollution. 
Adjacent to the treatment plant is this greenway space with drought-resistant plants, benches, and public art, inviting visitors to relax and enjoy the new scenery. We're repurposing it so that it creates a destination point. More improvements are coming, including a new soccer park, bike paths, and pedestrian walkways, all connected to a newly restored 6th Street Bridge, another breath of fresh air when those projects finally open in a few years. In Boyle Heights, Gil Reyes for LA This Week. The planned soccer park and its amenities are expected to open in 2019. And as the country commemorated the 50th anniversary of the Watts riots, many took to social media to share their thoughts, pictures, and experiences. That's the focus of This Week in Tweets. Congresswoman Janice Hahn shared where she was on that day, tweeting, On August 12, 1965, I woke up at church camp to the news that riots had broken out and my father had been attacked. Mayor Eric Garcetti posted, We remember those we lost and honor those who became catalysts for change. KCET Artbound posted a pic of the neighborhood burning out of control, tweeting, The Watts riots also reflected unheard voices in the Chicano community. Hashtag Watts 50. Linnell George posted a photo of two women walking around debris from a destroyed building, tweeting, We moved through streets like these. Buildings fell into themselves, so two memories. And that's a look at This Week in Tweets. While a gun safety ordinance becomes law, affordable housing gets a financial boost and getting up close and personal with L.A.'s biodiversity. All these stories and more in City Beat. L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti signed into law a gun safety measure that bans the possession of large-capacity magazines inside of city limits. This ordinance prohibits the ownership of magazines that hold more than 10 rounds of ammunition. The measure was introduced by Los Angeles City Councilman Paul Krikorian and passed in July. When a shooter has to stop and reload, those are precious seconds that can actually result in the preservation of lives that otherwise are lost. That allows law enforcement to get on the scene, it allows for them to stop the shooter, it allows people to go on living. The mayor also announced the expansion of the New Generation Fund, which will bring an additional $50 million to create, preserve, and retrofit affordable housing in the city. The fund offers pre-development and acquisition funding through a public-private partnership between the city and a group of banks and community development financial institutions. The mayor, who is working with the Los Angeles Housing and Community Investment Department, said that the public and private sectors must work together to preserve and expand affordable housing. Since its 2008 inception, the New Generation Fund has provided nearly $70 million for the construction and preservation of more than 1,300 affordable apartments. City Council Member Paul Koretz and the L.A. County Natural History Museum kicked off BioBlitz L.A., an effort intended to explore and document plant and wildlife in L.A. Dozens of volunteer citizen scientists will be trained to photograph and share the animals they find on social media so the scientists at the museum can better understand the different species that live within the human ecosystem to better protect their environment. It is vital to catalog the plants and animals with whom we share Los Angeles. So we know what else we have to lose if we don't take climate change action more quickly. The Department of Recreation and Parks, Councilman Mitchell Englander, and community members held a ribbon-cutting ceremony for the newly renovated Lazy J Ranch Park Playground in West Hills. The aging playground in the San Fernando Valley has been revamped and now features modern play equipment, accessible ramps, merry-go-round, bucket seat swing areas, and rubberized surfacing. Four large shade canopies have also been added to the play area, creating desirable shade for children during hot summer months. A seasoned artist gives us a glimpse into his unique creations. The rhythmic sounds of a Colombian duo soothe the soul and a controversial musical that targets presidential assassins. That's all in this week's Things to Do. An installation time-lapse video showcases artist Joseph Holtzman's creation at the Hammer Museum. A selection of Holtzman's recent works from 2006 to 2011 is on view now in a space designed by the artist. Drawing upon several decades of his experience as a designer, editor, and trendsetter, 
Holtzman created a site-specific environment at the Hammer that illuminates the artist's unique aesthetic. The exhibit is on display through September 20th at the Hammer Museum, located at 10899 Wilshire Boulevard. For more, visit hammer.ucla.edu. Journey through space and time with Lula Cruza, the South American duo boldly embracing the intersection of electronic and folk music traditions. Lula Cruza has been on an 18-city tour through the U.S., traveling throughout the Pacific Northwest and West Coast. On August 22nd, they'll be closing out the tour in L.A. at the beautiful Terragram Ballroom with the human experience, Sorne and the Dirty Diamond. This is a rare opportunity to catch Lula Cruza while they're in the U.S., Hailing from Colombia and Argentina, their raw performances have garnered a reputation for transporting audiences with their intimate, meditative qualities. Check them out at the Terragram Ballroom located at 1234 West 7th Street. For more, visit lulacruza.com. Disturbing, alarming, and eerily funny, Assassins is perhaps one of the most controversial musicals ever written. Stephen Sondheim, the great genius of contemporary musical theater, with standout shows such as Sweeney Todd, Into the Woods, and Company, leads audiences on a tuneful review of presidential assassins and would-be killers from John Wilkes Booth to John Hinckley. Thought-provoking and darkly delightful, Assassins won five Tony Awards in its first revival on Broadway. It's been described as dark, demented humor, as horrifying as it is hilarious. The curtain goes up starting August 22nd and runs through September 27th at the Pico Playhouse, located at 10508 West Pico Boulevard. For more, visit assassinsmusicalla.com. And that's a look at some things to do. It's back to school for many kids, and most will be picking up school supplies with their parents. But one program in South L.A. has the kids spending quality time shopping with a cop. Anna Marcos takes us on the shopping spree. These kids from South L.A.'s 77th Street Division are ready to go shop with a cop. We're going to have a lot, of, a lot of fun inside and get you ready for school. So everybody ready to go? Yes, sir. All right, perfect. And with that, the kids head into a local staple store. Box of colored pencils, two yellow highlighters, pencil sharpener, erasers, more erasers. The Shop with a Cop event helps kids buy school supplies they might not otherwise get. They were picked as the kids most in need from among the junior cadet sharks, an LAPD program at the 77th Street Station, which teaches kids discipline and leadership, as well as new relationships with those who hold a badge and gun. Junior Cadet Sharks, who's camping on 77th Street? Captain Polka! South Los Angeles is very busy. It has a tendency to have a, a lot of crime. These kids are exposed to things that most kids in the United States do not see. And it gives them the opportunity to have a positive experience with a Los Angeles police officer. It's just a wonderful thing. Uh, the kids love it. The police officers love it. I feel excited be because we, we're, we're going to get free stuff. The kids each get a brand new school backpack and a $100 gift card. So what does $100 buy? I got paper clips. I got color pencils, 36 pack, white out. Well, I asked Josh what he would want if he could choose anything in the store, and he chose to get some whiteout. Okay, white okay, good. Yeah, we all make mistakes. <laughs> but some kids know what they really want, gummy worms. You got to have candy, right? Money for the school supplies comes back. from a private donor, but the officers pay out of their own pockets if the kids go over budget. And with that, the kids are prepped and ready for a brand new school year. The officers hope to do it all again next school semester. I'm Anna Marcos for L.A. This Week. A total of 25 kids got to shop with a cop. Well, that's going to do it for this edition. I'm Yana Kay, and from all of us here at L.A. This Week, thanks for joining us. We leave you now with some photos of the Watts riots taken by LAFD photographers. Most of them have never been seen publicly. The negatives were discovered in the City Records Center last year and are now preserved in the city archives. We'll see you back here next week for more of L.A. This Week.
escapes from a wildfire can travel more than a mile. Get Fire Adapted now. Learn simple steps at fireadapted.org. It's our duty to serve veterans and military families who serve their country in the most difficult ways imaginable. Together, we can say thank you in so many ways. Small acts of kindness mean more than anything. With our support, veterans and military families can face even the most difficult challenges. Let's honor their service with ours. Kevin from Chatsworth, offering you a taste of New Orleans since 1986. You're watching LA City View, Channel 35. Our city, our channel.
Good morning. I would like to welcome you to your Los Angeles City Council. The date is uh, Wednesday, August 19th. This council meets every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday at uh, 10 a.m. And the public is welcome. Madam Clerk, I believe we have a quorum. Could you please call the roll? Blumenfeld, Blumen Bonnet, Buscaino, Cedillo, Englander, Fuentes, Harris, Dawson, Wizard, Caress, Cricoria, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rue, Wesson, 10 members present, a quorum, Mr. President. Okay, first order of business. Approval in the minutes. Okay, Bonnet moves, Buscaino seconds. Next. Committed to resolutions for approval. Uh, Blumenfield moves, Fuentes seconds. That brings us where? Mr. President, there's a request to continue items 1P and 49 to September 29th. 20, I'm sorry, to September 2nd. Okay, without objection, that'll be the order. Next. Items 1 through 15 are items known for public hearing. The Department of Building and Safety report said items 1B may be received and filed in as much as the lien has been partially paid and rescinded, and that items 1D, I, and L may be received and filed in as much as the liens have been paid in full. Also, there is a request to continue item 2D to September 9th. Okay, so without objection, that'll be the, uh, the order. Do we have any cards on these items? Yes, cards on items 2 and 15. Let's hold those two items and let's prepare to vote on the remaining items. Uh, Madam Clerk, please open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. Ten ayes. And the ordinances, items 3 through 9, will be um, carried over for a second reading for one in one week, if not reconsidered with 12 members. Okay, that's fine. Let's move on. Items 16 through 46 are items which public hearings have been held. Okay, members, Mr. Fuentes. Item 46, special, please. Item 46 for Mr. Fuentes. Uh, members, any other special? Mr. Coretz. Items 18 and 25. 18 and 25 for uh, Mr. Coretz. Uh, let's uh, prepare to vote on the remaining items. Uh, excuse me, Mr. President, for items 32 through 36, the committee report has not been um, circulated yet. Um, those should be held on the desk. Okay, so then, then uh, that'll be the action. So on the remaining items, let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Okay, uh, where are we now? Items 47 through 51 are items for which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes required for consideration. Okay, so without objection, those items are now before this body. Do we have cards? Yes, cards on items 47 and 50. We'll hold those items. Members, we will now vote on the remaining items. Uh, let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. Twelve ayes. Okay, that brings us where? Item Mr. Bloomingfield. Go forthwith, please. Item 38, uh, forthwith uh, per uh, Mr. Bloomingfield's re request. So that brings us again where? Item 52 is a closed session item. Do you wish to hold that on the desk? I will look to uh, Mr. Krikorian and see if I can get some guidance. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Budget and Finance considered this matter and recommends approval of the city attorney's recommendations. Uh, that can be uh, voted on in open session unless members have questions or concerns. Okay, then, uh, Madam Clerk, why don't you read the item and let's proceed. Let's go. Fifty what? Fifty-two special. Okay, so fifty-two has been called special by Mr. Bonin. So that brings us where? On the continuation agenda, item fifty-three is an item notice for public hearing. Uh, there's a request to reduce the amount of this lien to three hundred ninety-eight dollars and sixteen cents. Cards? No cards. Why don't we vote on that item? Let us open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. Twelve eyes. 
Okay, so that brings us where? Mr. President, um, items 30, the reports for items 32, 33, 34, 35, and 36 have been circulated. Council may vote on those items at this time. Okay, good recommendation, and I will follow it. So those items are now before this body. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. All right, that, that's approved. And Mr. President, uh, now that there's 12 minutes, do you wish, 12 members, do you wish to reconsider the ordinances? Hey, we can get 12 minutes to vote as well. Members' minutes, we, we've been called worse. Okay, so let's, let us, uh, so we have to fo first vote on reconsideration. Yes, and those are items 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 7, 16 and 17. Okay, so the first vote will be on reconsideration. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Now let's actually vote on the, uh, the items. Let us open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Okay, Madam Clerk, so the 12 members slash minutes have approved that. What is before this body now? Mr. President, I bring this council to items called special. All right. You know what, Mr. Fuentes? Why don't we just uh, knock out uh, your item right now? Was, wasn't that 46? Uh, item 46. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, uh, item 46 deals with the fallout of the failed rollout of the customer service system that we began in 2000, the fall of 2013. And, and let me thank my colleagues on the committee for really sitting in on a very uh, deep dive conversation about the recommendations that you're going to hear about. I'll, I'd like to call the ratepayer uh, advocate up so we can talk a little bit about this. The, um, there was a lot of uh, initial responses to this rollout, some that included a state audit. Uh, of course, the Department of uh, Water and Power did its best to um, try to deal with the situation, but as all of you can attest to, it was dealt with very slowly and not as uh, efficiently as we needed it to have been. And so with that, our ratepayer advocate, Dr. Pickle, uh, did a report. He's got some recommendations, and I'd let him uh, present those now. Good morning. I'm Fred Pickle, Executive Director of the Office of Public Accountability Ratepayer Advocate. I have a small number of PowerPoint slides for you on this. Uh, first, uh, the request for this report was initiated uh, by a council motion in March of this year. Uh, this report is intended as a constructive approach to look at uh, learning from DWP's billing challenges and uh, given further investment required in DWP's new customer information system and the need for replacement updates to numerous other key D DWP systems, we felt learning from this uh, would be very important. Uh, most of the recommendations are intermediate and long-term and are not intended to uh, be preconditions for any rate review. Key aspects of the report were uh, a brief look at the results of the state audit issued in March. Uh, in the core areas, there are chiefs looking at the chief sources of delay. Uh, there were delays in acquiring resources, both outside consultants and in hiring uh, post-launch. And there were also delays in establishing long-term plans uh, for the joint system um, and components of DWP that were working on the billing system and related customer support and in seeking control by those groups uh, for execution. Our key recommendations, which I'll talk about more, are uh, steps needed to restore DWP agility and stabilize management. Um, and then the last slide will be uh, steps in dividing the tasks. Our key recommendations. Uh, 
first for DDP's joint division, sometimes called administrative division or shared services, uh, as the part of the next phase of DWP's benchmarking efforts. Now, uh, phase two should be beginning soon. Uh, establish a joint services division with a management structure that has adequate span of control over its co uh, responsibilities. Not too many people reporting to key executives. Uh, instead, uh, a focused effort. And then within the next year, we recommend uh, strengthening uh, the joint systems program management office within uh, that division. And this means establishing a program management office with directive authority and control. By control, we mean things as important as ability to stop work on key projects uh, when there are disputes over key components and establish a delegation framework for the program management office that addresses not only budget and schedule, but also operating risks and labor limitations. Uh, there needs to be an advisory body of user an advisory means not the ability for the, this group to vote. The ability to vote uh, should be an appellate group of the three AGMs in DWP between the Power Division, the Joint or Administrative Division, and the Water Division. Um, the third key recommendation is greater transparency of uh, DWP's IBEW MOU Appendix B outsourcing protocol. Uh, and fourth, uh, within three months, um, a contract for a backup call center with objective parameters for triggering use and increasing permanent staffing when use grows beyond the backup reliance. Uh, uh, we were surprised by the lack of a backup call center uh, as we got into this. Uh, DWP has moved very quickly on this recommendation in particular and uh, has recently uh, completed a contract uh, with the appropriate uh, outsourcing agreement with IBEW. Uh, now that this is in place, this has to be executed, and we need to gain experience in managing overflow to a call wait time standard and permanent stand, uh, staffing at two distinct call centers to be planned uh, in, uh, that are under planning and should proceed soon. Uh, we think that this should all be revisited in about two years um, to adjust staffing in terms of what's at permanent, the, the city's permanent centers and uh, with the backup call center. Uh, in the short term, uh, with an existing governance, we should find ways to allow DWP to contract as well as hire within 30 days under dire and urgent circumstances. The council has the ability to declare an emergency and move things forward, but we think there are things that uh, don't rise to the level of a citywide emergency that uh, should allow DWP to contract on an expedited, contract and hire on an expedited basis um, when service, for example, service levels are not being met. Uh, and finally, a medium term goal to allow DWP to hire within six months and procure within three months. And I'd like to note, uh, for many of the short-term components, DWP has already made notable progress, and the contract um, for the backup call center uh, was approved by the DWP board in early August. In summary, um, the detailed recommendation section for our report included 23 recommendations with uh, combinations of steps uh, directed to the DWP board, the mayor, and the city council. Uh, this long list uh, needs additional work um, in terms of who takes which step when. Uh, DWP uh, and others are working on that list. And uh, while well, quite a few of these recommendations have or why a few of these recommendations have a short-term horizon, uh, most are likely to require an extended focus with steps that may include ordinance or even charter changes. Uh, key, uh, the key efforts that remain related to building greater agility are within the short term allowing DWP to hire in that 
day period as well as contract under extreme circumstances and um, the medium term goal to allow DWP to hire within six months and procure within three months. Um, the Office of Public Accountability Repair Advocate will monitor progress and work with DWP management uh, on this. Uh, we will report back to the council, the mayor, and the DWP board on progress. Uh, since keeping a business operation like a proprietary uh, can uh, cause great inconvenience for the citizens, um, if these timing and procurement goals cannot be achieved in a reasonable time, uh, OPA recommends more fundamental and comprehensive changes that we can revisit if needed. Thank you. Any questions? Mr. Fuentes, you'd like to wrap this up? Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. And seeing that there aren't any questions, I'll try to be brief. Colleagues, so, so this uh, system uh, failure, the rollout of it, has been living with us for about two years now. There's the obvious thing that we needed to make sure that we got the system up and going, and, and the department's done a good job in getting to a place where we're just about stabilized. We're stabilized but almost remedied. Um, there was a huge accounts receivable under collection in the hundreds of millions of dollars. There was a state audit. There was class action litigation, which we settled recently, and now we're suing the contractor to try to recover some of these costs. It's a long way to say that there's a lot that's happening on this issue. It's been living with us for about two years now, and we are going to follow up on these uh, recommendations in the committee as well as all the other things that we mentioned that we've been monitoring. But we're also going to try to work with the Board and Water and Power Commissioners to see what it is that uh, they'll do with these recommendations. As you all know, we share a lot of the blame when it comes to the Department of Water and Power, the Commission, the Mayor, the Council, and there's very little accountability um, to any one body. So the governance makes it difficult, which is why these recommendations are really important for us to remember. As Dr. Pickle said, it's a long horizon that we're going to have to work on to try to get more governance in place to get this utility doing what it's supposed to do, which is giving the best value, the, the most dependable service to its ratepayers. And uh, with that, I want to ask you for your I vote uh, and your continued support. Uh, and thanks to my colleagues on the committee, because we've been living with this for two years. Uh, and it has it's it's defined everything that this committee has done since uh, since I've gotten here. So with that, I'd ask for an I vote. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Fuentes. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote? Twelve ayes. Mr. Koretz, um, I believe it's item 18, but if I'm wrong, correct me. Yes, yes thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I just wanted to flag this item for the council. Um, a couple weeks ago, the PAW committee heard this item on our agenda, and the personnel department was asking for council to improve extension of our flex benefits contract for one more year. Now, as part of the responsibility to monitor the flex benefit program, um, providers are, are uh, rated for their renewals. Uh, Kaiser wants to raise its rates by 4.65%. Blue Shield wants to increase its PPO by 11.90%, and both of its HMO plans by almost 11%. Now, the, the Joint Labor and Management Committee evaluates this, um, and they evaluate it based on uh, uh, the experience of the flex population. And this is important. What, what they do look at is the subcomponents of the renewal proposals, the benchmarks of the city's plan, and the cost compared to other governmental and non-governmental agencies. What they, in fact, don't do is they don't actually gauge the satisfaction of the flex population, which I think is a big piece of what they should be doing. So as a condition of going forward to approve this rate increase, um, in committee we ask that uh, the JLNBC uh, surveys the actual population to uh, attain their level of satisfaction, at least before we uh, do the longer term renewal and the RFP. Um, we've gotten a number of complaints about Blue Shield and their service. We've gotten some complaints about Delta Dental and uh, uh, 
the weakness of their benefits. So we're asking that uh, the city, city employees be surveyed to see their actual level of satisfaction and that uh, we push our current uh, providers to do a better job. So uh, with that in mind, I ask for your I vote. Thank you so much, Mr. Koretz. Okay, Madam Clerk, if you would uh, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Okay, Mr. Uh, uh, Harris Dawson, are, are you, it's my understanding you wanted to reconsider something uh, from yesterday or anyway, uh, just tap me when you guys are ready to move forward on that. So now why don't we go to item 52, uh, Mr. Uh, Biden. Uh, thank so you, Mr. members, President. we're now on item 52. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, this is an item we heard in uh, Budget and Finance Committee a couple weeks ago. It's a payout of uh, legal fees to uh, Carol Sobel for a, a lawsuit over the city's illogical uh, homeless policies uh, here in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, it springs from um, a police action in Venice before I took office, uh, the city's uh, approach to enforcing a ban on vehicular living, uh, which said that you can't live in your vehicles. Uh, the court has essentially struck down our ordinance, and the city attorney is working on uh, a couple different alternatives for our consideration. Uh, but this case really illustrates sort of the profoundly illogical way that we approach homelessness in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, there was, in this case, some really bad facts. Uh, there was, in this case, an instance where, uh, completely compliant with city policy, someone who was living in their vehicle was asked to get out of their vehicle because it wasn't legal to be sleeping in there and was told that they could sleep instead on the sidewalk. That makes absolutely no sense. There's a different way to do this. When we have the two ordinances that come forward, we will have an option to either try to go to bat the same way we're doing now and effectively try to find another way to tell people they can't live in their vehicles, or we can try to find a way to do something differently. We do the former, we're going to wind up paying Carol Sobel another million dollars or so. What we can do differently is the way they do it in Santa Barbara, where they have a safe parking program. Uh, Assemblyman Das Williams, when he was on the city council, put it together, and uh, it actually allows people a safe place to park if they're enrolled in social services and, and trying to get a place uh, uh, to live. Uh, there's actually going to be a forum here in Los Angeles where folks from Santa Barbara are coming down. It's going to be in the middle of September. I'll be sure everybody gets a, a flyer so you or your staffs can attend. Uh, but we need to be doing something differently with homelessness in Los Angeles. We can't keep making these stupid policies and then paying hand over fist to attorneys who rightfully kick our butts in court. So uh, I hope today's uh, payment is a cautionary tale for us and we'll keep it in mind when we consider the two options the city attorney is bringing forward about how to deal with this issue in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, why don't we, Madam Clerk, uh, prepare to vote on this? Uh, and Mr. President, um, this is um, settlement in the case entitled Cheyenne Desert Rain versus the City of Los Angeles. The recommendation is to authorize the city attorney to pay a total of $1,100,000 in settlement. Okay, so on this item, let us open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Mr. City Attorney, could you explain why we uh, did not have to take public comment on this item? Public comment was taken up in Budget and Finance Committee. Thank you very much. All right, so uh, Mr. Buscaino, is Joey... Fourth with on the previous item. Thank you, Mr. President and colleagues. It's great to welcome the Italy America Chamber of Commerce West, which is uh, an organization that represents the interests of Italian businesses in the western region of the United States. Let's give them a round of applause to the John Ferraro, a great Italian American chambers here at the City Hall. Thank you so much for joining us. With one of the largest ports in North America, it's imperative for Los Angeles to foster relations with other regions in the world that are heavily involved in international trade. And it's these trade partnerships 
that not, not only make Los Angeles the global world-class city that it is, but also make California one of the largest economies in the world. Eh, in poche parole in italiano, dobbiamo tenere, dobbiamo tenere il nostro rapporto stretto. We have to keep our tight relationship. Um, come si dice in Italia, facciamo l'amore, non facciamo la guerra. Let's make love, not war. And through the facilitation of trade and with international companies, we can enjoy products and services from all over the world. In fact, we are in the process and working with the Port of Los Angeles to name the Port of Palermo a sister port. The Port of Palermo is known uh, primarily for its passenger cruise businesses and, and it uh, ranks one of the top ports in the Mediterranean as it relates to the cruise industry. And it's also one of the main point of entries uh, for goods movement in the southern part of Italy. With us here, Mr. President and colleagues, is the Executive Director of the Italy America Chamber of Commerce West, Emanuele, Emanuela Pane Bianco. And joined her, joining her is a president, Chris Manfre, and the vice president, uh, Mr. Wes Hooker Polenti. I'd like to turn it over for a couple minutes, Mr. President, to Emanuela to say a few words on behalf of the chamber. Oh, Chris, Cristofolo. Um, Chris Manfred to say a few words. Welcome. Good morning, President, Council Members. It's my pleasure to be here. Um, we want to give this letter to Council Member Joe Buscaino, and I'm going to read briefly an excerpt of this letter. Dear Council Joe Buscaino, Councilman Joe Buscaino, the members of the Italy American Chamber of Commerce West extend a cordial invitation to you to join our organization as honorary chair of the board and help us fully execute on our mission and strengthen our bonds with the city of Los Angeles, the Italian American community and the port of Los Angeles. The Italy America Chamber of Commerce West is a Los Angeles based organization. It has been actively promoting and strengthening trade relations between Italy and the US Western region since 1987. As a nonprofit organization, we provide our members and the community at large with a variety of services that help them grow and thrive locally and globally. We appreciate your time, Joe Buscaino, and consideration for the position of honorary chair of the board and hope that you will accept our invitation with the installation ceremony planned on October 20th at Locanda del Lago in Santa Monica. Grazie. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Honor, Mr. President, should I, should I accept on behalf of Yes, the, you okay, should. Okay, I do accept. Thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. You know, we also, I know Mr. Cedillo uh, traveled with then Councilwoman Janice Hahn when we blessed the sister city uh, in Ischia, uh, which is a sister city we're really proud of. And also a true Italian American, Mr. Mike Bonin, who also sits on this council. Um, uh, thanks, Mike, for showing your Italian roots in, in support of what we're trying to accomplish between um, our respective countries and our respective cities. So thank you very much, Mr. President, for allowing us to, to highlight and celebrate the work that the Italy America Chamber of Commerce West does here in our region. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you all for all that you do. Why don't we go, Mr. Koretz, it's my understanding on item 25, your concerns have been uh, addressed? Yeah, that's correct, so uh, I withdraw. Okay, so why don't we so I ask for an I vote. Well, we'll vote on item 25. Let us, Madam Clerk, open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay, so on item uh, uh, number one, I'm going to ask for reconsideration on that item. So let's have a vote on reconsideration. Let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Uh, and I'm going to just quickly switch to item 50. We'll come back to item one. I have cards on 50. I have Mr. Previn and Mr. Walsh on item 
50. No applause, Mr. Hermit. Uh, please come forward, Mr. Previn and uh, Mr. Uh, John Walsh. Go right ahead. Yes, it's Eric Previn, a resident from CD2. And thanks, Mr. Bonin, for that important update about the Cheyenne Desert Train matter. Let's stay on this two. item, Mr. Yeah. Previn. Mr. Wesson, Council President Wesson, uh, this is item 50. It has to do with a party car in CD12. This is a term that people should not be confused. This is not police officers going around and having a party in a car. This is a vehicle that will be dedicated to a patrol beat that includes uh, monitoring various festivals and uh, entertainment gatherings where people do a variety of activities including busting a move, uh, you know, unfortunately also wrestling with one another from time to time, occasionally swimming inappropriately with clothing on and both off on in various other configurations, sir. But the party car is dedicated to uh, that kind of activity, if I'm not mistaken. And then what they'll do is they'll make sure there's no gang activity, no weapons being used, no uh, protocols regarding alcoholic beverages being consumed, uh, being broken. And, and the idea, I think, is to ease off on ordinary law enforcement, where we are very focused on, obviously, um, you know, enforcing the laws and, uh, as everybody here will jump into a chorus of public safety, of course, because public safety is critical. Uh, you know, I'm very upset, though, because uh, cars going around and asking, um, you know, individuals to move their vehicles was the area where I wanted to speak today because I've been very focused on it. You know that, sir, and I don't understand where we're no, going. No, you're not on the subject Yeah, no, I'm now. done. Thank you're you. You're not on the subject. Right, that's why I'm stuck. You're not on the subject, Mr. Uh, Previn. Last time I'm going to... Uh, warn you on that. Come on, Mr. Uh, Walsh, item 50. John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org, or Jay Walsh Confidential, tweeting at Hollywood Dems. Uh, what is a party car? That's right. But uh, in, um, in L.A., the party throwers should pay the police costs for the party car. We had chaos the other day because we didn't have a party car at the uh, at Vera Gosa's uh, fundraiser for Hillary Clinton. Yes, when a party is out of control, then the party car shows up. Why should we pay for it? The party throwers should pay for it. They're the ones, not the, uh, we shouldn't be paying the $40,000, but remember, those people who throw the party make large contributions to the mayor and the city council, and they get free security Stay on from the, the LAPD subject. in the party car. That's what I said. Fuck you. Okay, you're off the subject, uh, Mr. Walsh. You've been warned. Okay, let's prepare to uh, vote. I don't have a card. It must not have been turned in on, on in time. So on this item, Mr. Herman, you are disrupting the meeting. Again, please sit down. Let us uh, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Where it relates to cards when we begin the conversation. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. What would you say? How many eyes? 13. 13? Okay. All right. We're going to move now to item... 47, I'm told, and we'll go with Mr. Previn, uh, Mr. Herman, and Mr. Walsh, and Ms. Ramirez. Item, uh, you are off the subject uh, one more time, Mr. Herman. You're off the subject. Wait, we're still getting uh, disruption. Sergeants, I'm going to stop every. Show res no, show respect to the individuals that are at the podium. It is now Mr. Previn's time. It is no one else's time but Mr. Previn. Ms. Right. It, okay. Th uh, are we going? Thank you. Hi. It is Eric Previn, a CD, uh, a resident from CD2, and I don't want. I'd like to use the remaining time when I uh, abdicate when I stepped away earlier because I am I'm monitoring the time closely. So this will be only 60 seconds because it's a very confusing item. This is setting tax rates. So this is obviously an exciting time. And what we do here is we set the tax rate to cover our costs. So because the real estate value, assessed real estate value went up in the last period, uh, 
we are taking a teeny bit less, so that's great news. That really is great news. Thank you. Uh, and that's about 2 percent or 2 cents on a dollar or something like that. It is a bit confusing. What I couldn't find, and I'd like to get this in the next 15 or 20, someone could bring it over. It's, I couldn't find Brentwood, Bel Air, or uh, Pacific Palisades identified as such. I found Studio City. That's my neighborhood. And, I, but, and it might be that they're, I'm sure they're there. I also couldn't find Compton, to be fair. It's not just, it's not a rich poor thing. It's a, are these coded differently? So if, um, and City of Compton may be a different city, so that may be why that's not there. But uh, thank you. Mr. Walsh, followed by Ms. Ramirez. John Walsh at HollywoodHighlands.org. This concerns levying taxes and selling, setting tax rates for several interest and sinking funds for the bonded indebtedness of the city of fiscal city. Well, I'm sure this has been totally vetted by the uh, CAO and the CLA, or it wouldn't be presented here. However, when I go down into the small print, what it says, fiscal impact statement. Well, you have to have that for you to vote yes. None submitted by the city attorney, neither the city CAO, the chief administrative officer, nor the CLA, the chief legislative analyst, has complete, completed a financial analysis of this report, and it will receive uh, 15 votes, including Rue, for this when it has never, ever been analyzed by anybody in the city. HollywoodHighlands.org. Ms. Ramirez. Ms. Ramirez passes. Let us be prepared to vote now on this item. Madam Clerk, would you please uh, open the roll? Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay. Now we'll move on to item one. Mr. Herman, Mr. Walsh. Mr. Herman, run his time. Fuck you. Okay, you know what, Mr. Herman, you're not on the subject. I warned you three times. J Please do not do that again, Mr. Uh, Walsh. City attorney said don't throw him out. City attorney told him not to throw him out. Okay, uh... You missed that. Hearing protests on number one, this concerns uh, liens. And as we said, when you do a good job, and you generally do a good job, here and there you make a mistake. But these liens on property owners are very, uh, are a good job. And, and when you do uh, the right thing, we're first people, first person to uh, say what a good job you've done. And uh, city attorney is still conferring on what happened before, HollywoodHighlands.org. Mr. Uh, Orlando Fuentes, please come forward. Morning, sir. Okay, uh, I'm here. I just received a letter to um, to my address for about um, uh, 16. $123. And the reason what I'm like to uh, do it is something about it is I don't feel uh, uh, comfortable with this because it's not fair way for three years to, s to receive the le this letter to my house when the bill, when I paid, when I sent my money order to pay my bill, that was like uh, $300, I think. I'm not so sure with that one. But see, right now, almost some uh, $2,000. What was that address again, sir? The that address. That was about my um, situation where I had in my uh, back in the garage, and that was closing in my um, uh, 2012, I think. Yes, uh, seven seven nine in 2012, and they, they I just received a letter three years later, you know, and now it's going to be like uh, you know my house is in lien for sixteen hundred and twenty three dollars. And I don't think it's fair, you know, to the mouth. So are, are you referring to the address at uh, 12 
49 West 76th Street? That's correct. And Okay, continue. In, uh, now uh, I like to know, see if uh, you guys can do it or something about it, because to me, it doesn't sound like uh, too much money for this. And if I don't have any auction, you know, so I don't know what I can do right now about it. And if I can make it up, Richmond or something, but uh, with that much money, see, I don't feel comfortable. Okay, we appreciate you coming you. down. Okay, no applause. I have a card from an individual who signed up to speak on 1N, and the first name begins with an M. Please come forward, sir, and, and state your name for the record. Yes, sir. Hi, Mikey Dardashti. And what address, sir? 1001 North Hillcrest. Okay, go right ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, I think I got a notice uh, to pay a fine with the uh, building and safety, and I didn't receive it properly, so there was interest and penalties added, and I'm requesting the payments. I'm requesting the interest and the penalty to be removed. Continue. Because I wasn't served properly. Repeat. No, yeah, I'm just waiting for you. you this, this is your time. You can say whatever. That's it. Okay, well, we appreciate you coming. Thank you. Now, I have another card from Mr. Juan Acala. On uh, item one. Uh, you just formed the ad hoc uh, homeless fighting committee. Stay on the subject. Yeah, you're a homeless making institution. Look at all those liens, and a lot of them, people didn't even receive their notice properly, and they never will. And you will keep on charging and charging and charging. You're trying to make people. Homeless, that is your mission in life, you bunch of nerds, idiots, whatever you went to school for, you're fucking up. Stay on the subject. The subject is you're screwing up, and you're screwing people up for no reason at all. We all deserve a place to have a place to live. Stay on the subject. The, yes, that is the subject. You keep taking houses away from people. And you're supposed to be the people helping us. We elected you, so you ride around on your limousines instead of helping us. You damned idiots. I saw you at the Wall of China. What were you doing over there? He is not talking you're about not this on item the subject. Yeah, yeah, I saw you Thank there. Thank you, Mr. Akala. Thank you. All right. Are there any more comments on this item? I do not see any. Madam Clerk, please open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. The, uh, can we get a little help with the mic? We're having some technical difficulties, but it was 13 eyes. Now we will move to item, I believe, 15. And on that item, I have cards. Mr. Previn, 15. Ms. Ramirez, you're after Mr. Previn. Okay, it is, a, yes, greetings. Are the technical difficulties resolved, sir? It is Eric Previn uh, from CD2. Item 15 is an application uh, for determination of the public convenience or necessity for alcohol sales at a 7-Eleven in the Rampart area. Now, 7-Elevens are obviously uh, prevalent. Uh, it's a big company. They do a, they do a pretty good job uh, in many people's neighborhoods. They're clean. They're well-managed, generally speaking. 
Um, the question is, is there really a need or a public necessity to bring in more alcoholic uh, beverages in this area? There are several. I looked at it closely within 500 meters. There's several. There's, there's more. And there's lots of churches and schools within 1,000 meters, I think it is, or maybe it's f uh, feet. I don't know. But, you know, it's really a, a question. And, you know, private um, policing of the neighborhoods is good. Uh, not really. But I guess what I'm saying is that these 7-Elevens, where I've had some experience at the county, I know Hilda Solis has been uh, being, she's been romanced in a similar fashion by 7-Eleven to try to get into the various parts of her district. That's the county um, supervisor district number one. Um, and, you know, they, they, the sheriff deputies will set up a little area in the back. They make it very friendly. And one would argue maybe this brings public safety to the area. Mr. Eric, please but return the to is, this subject. But the problem is that, what are you talking about, sir? That is, I'm talking about the issue. Are you not listening? No, you weren't. Okay. What are you, okay, uh, let's not, that's just go on. Give me th 10 seconds back, sir. That's no, you so just rude. go on. I'm talking about 7-Elevens in our neighborhood. That's what this Continue is about. Continue to talk about 7-Eleven this item. Okay. So now I've been derailed. So that's a, con con congratulations, sir. I mean, you've done a good job. I mean, uh, why would you do that to a person who comes down Thank here? Thank you. You're off the time? subject, Ms. Ramirez. Followed by Mr. Wash. No applause, Mr. Herman. Yes, Ms. Ramirez. Thank you. Let us not hijack these business individuals who sacrifice their lives to save money and establish their own businesses. Let their minds buy what they choose and sell their products and goods and continue the flow of commerce freely, openly, and with no obstacles and no one to impinge on their freedom to choose and select what they want to sell. Now, again, are we going back to the prohibition era? Are we censoring them in a different way, not in speech, but in merchandise and sales of their products? That is, that is un-American. Again, if these kids' parents don't teach them right from wrong, Stay that's on their problem. Stay on and again, we as a city must allow these businesses to sell what they legally should. If, they, if, it's, if it's on the inventory list to sell booze in America then they have that right to sell booze in America. If America takes it off the in inventory list that we cannot sell booze in America, then take it off and no, no business will have to sell business. Uh, they, no businesses will sell liquor and they won't have to go through the city council determination. So what I say is freely give them that business license to sell booze of all kinds. Okay? It is American. It is American. We're not in the prohibition era. Stand. We're not censoring these lovely people who work their butts off to want to sell booze. You know? I don't like booze myself, by the grace of God. So I won't be buying it. And I certainly won't go to Rampart. I hate Rampart. So, again, and the cops don't, aren't any better. So, please, allow every business individual to assert their First Amendment right and sell their booze. Who are we to use any forms of draconian style of um, Nazism and, 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 and deny them that right? And God bless Thank Donald you. Trump. God Thank bless you. Donald Trump. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walsh, followed by Mr. Akala. John Walsh, HollywoodHighlands.org. Again, a salute to Mr. Price, the first city councilman in the past 10 years to actually vote against a new liquor license the more we have more liquor licenses in per square mile than any other city in the united states and also more drunk driving killing sometimes you have to in, in on south Rhine park go 10 15 as much as 20 feet before you can buy alcohol and i don't see anything in the constitution about the right to sell poison and uh, these places we don't need any more and every time somebody you're going to vote for this but every time somebody dies from hit and run, the, except for Mr. Curran Price, the blood of that person is on your hands for having unlimited uh, liquor licenses in this city of, of Los Angeles. For shame. We, they, we do not need any more liquor licenses for convenience and necessity up your asses. Thank your you. Your asses. time is, thank you. Your time is expired. Mr. Akala, fired, followed by Mr. Herman. I will, I will uh, start my speech where he ended his, up your ass. 
You fools, why are you giving the right to sell drugs? Alcohol is a drug, you idiots. And you keep, keep telling the kids no to drugs, say no to drugs. What the hell compels you to be so stupid? Oh, it's money. City Hall needs money. It doesn't matter how they get it. Let's legalize marijuana, but let's make money out of it. Let's legalize every drug, but let's make money out of it. Fuck you, people. You're really not very human. You take people's houses away. Stay on a second. And you give permission to sell drugs just to make money. It doesn't matter what the consequences are. It doesn't matter how many people get run over on the street. It doesn't matter. It's all about money for City Hall. Take it from the people any way they can. And I don't know who the fuck invented this system. Was it George Washington? Stay on the subject. Or his Stay wife? on the subject. Well, I'm talking about a system that helps people get drugs instead of helping them get housing. Okay, you're off the subject. Thank you so much, Mr. Akala. Your time is done. We'll bring up Mr. Herman. Unlimited public convenience for necessity in alcohol sales for off-site consumption at another fucking 7-Eleven convenience market. Sadly to say, it's no secret that alcohol consumption can cause major health problems, including injuries sustained in auto accidents, Judge Ferguson's son, or even a bicycle accident, Judge Ferguson's son, are these the only health risks? You created a state danger. It's called the state created a danger, providing us with unlimited alcohol sales. But the research says you have linked alcohol consumption to more than 60 other related fucking diseases. Cancer, anemia, cardiovascular, cirrhosis, dementia, and not to mention your fucking high blood pressure when you get mad when I exercise my right about 7-Eleven convenience markets at 610 South Rampart. This is not Sadio's problem. He's influenced by your fucking bullshit to provide 7-Elevens with unlimited alcohol permits. Stop it. And besides, what is Hill... Hilda Solis of the county doing with the sheriffs and the 7-Eleven. Is she courting them? You're off the subject. No, I'm talking Stay about consumption at 7-Eleven located at Rampart. And it says application filed by Metha Beban Shakavaba Sharain Olson, the representative. Fuck you. How's that? Did I violate the Brown Act? Because you, I'm Now you're off the subject. That you're providing a disease in our neighborhoods and our communities and it gets me very upset that the children have to walk three feet to the next liquor store to buy alcohol so we can get all fucked up isn't that fucked up thank you your time is expired let us uh in fact let me recognize mr sadio members i move approval of item 15. all right on that item let us or, or must we have a motion, Madam Clerk? Is that what I... For the record, um, Mr. Sadio's motion is to grant... Wait, wait, wait. We're having disruptions. Please, Mr. Akala, you're disrupting sergeants. Have a conversation with him. Now, back to the uh, Madam Clerk. For the record, uh, Mr. Sadio's motion is to grant the application. Okay. So with that said, let's open the roll. Close the roll. Mr. Boos... Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Now, Mr. Buscaino. President, I just have a number of items to go forth with, please. Go right ahead. Uh, 25, 39, 40, 41, and 42, please. Okay. Thank per you. Mr. Buscaino's uh, request, all of those items will be moved forth with. Okay, we have, uh, I'm going to go to uh, 
uh, Council Member Rue for a very important introduction. Me? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Um, you know, at this time, I have, we have a good friend, um, uh, uh, president of the Los Angeles Community College um, Districts, um, Scott Svonkin, in the audience, wanted to recognize. Thank you for coming, and I wanted to uh, let my colleagues know that uh, one of our friends are here. Thank you. Okay, now we'll move uh, again and welcome Mr. Sadia. Yes, uh, on, on announcements in the chambers, um, last night I saw this incredible documentary on the uh, great mayor, Tom Bradley. Uh, one of the stars of, of that documentary was Dr. Fernando Guerra, who talked uh, much about the history uh, that led to uh, our great grace of uh, that great mayor. Mayor Tom Bradley, Fernando Guerra is with us. Dr. Guerra is with us in the chambers. Okay, so we have Dr. Guerra and Fam. Anyway, good. To, you're welcome. Good to see you, and thank you for all of the work that you've done for so long in this great city. Okay, let's move on to uh, item two. I have cards on this item, so if I could uh, get a Francis Martin. Please come forward. Mr. Previn, I have two cards from you on item two, so if you would follow uh, Mr. Martin. Yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. President and members of the council. I represent the taxpayer in this matter, uh, Richard M. Lester, a law corporation. Uh, the city wishes to file a lien for unpaid business taxes. My client is a law firm that performs much of its work outside the city. Uh, my, my client has been paying his, its taxes according to apportionment rates for gross receipts generated by work performed outside the city that were agreed upon by my client and the city in 1996. So what happened was this, this past year, <clears throat> excuse me, this past year the city conducted an audit and change the apportionment rates. As I said, my clients had been paying its taxes, but the city is now retroactively demanding my client pay additional taxes for the last three years based on the new apportionment, which my client finds unreasonable and unconstitutional. My client has gone through the administrative appeals processes, and we will be filing a lawsuit in Superior Court to challenge the tax assessment uh, we will be arguing in court that it is unconstitutional for the city to retroactively change the apportionment rates and demand additional taxes when my client has been paying taxes according to rates that were agreed upon since 1996. We will also be challenging the new apportionment and the city's categorizing some of my client's employees as independent contractors also. So it would be unreasonable to file a tax lien when there has not been a judicial determination as to what the tax assessment should be. So my, on behalf of my client, we're respectfully requesting that the city delay filing this tax lien um, until that determination is made in court. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's my, uh, uh, Mr. Previn, it's my understanding that you're out of time. Mr. Uh, Mr. Herman, you have one minute. Mi no, Mr. Mr. Prev Sergeants, it's my. I'll sort this out, but it's my understanding uh, that he has no time left. Uh, Mr. Herman, you have one minute. I'm told. You heard it. It's unconstitutional to take your bullshit liens by changing rates without judicial determination. Without judicial determination. It's unconstitutional, Dion. And yet you fuckers take advantage of people in CD14 at Broadway Textile Incorporation, Miracle Communications Incorporation, Richard M. Lesser, ACALC, and what about the U.S. Metro Group Incorporation? Close to a million fucking dollars. 
I demand that you revoke all these liens, and I demand that they be put to the side until there's a judicial hearing to stop this process that is unconstitutional to record liens against taxpayers for unpaid fucking taxes. How American is that? How un-American is that, you anti-Christ, anti-Americans bastards? Stop fucking with people on the Thank taxes. you. Your time is done, Mr. Uh, Akala. No, in fact, before you speak, Mr. Blumenfield. Uh, j just this item uh, pertains to lien in my district. I'd like to continue it for two weeks so we can work with the constituent and see if there's any... Which one is that? About? That's item 2C. Item oh, 2C, okay. So you want to continue it? I want to continue for two weeks, item 2C, so we can work with the constituent and see if there's any way to resolve So two weeks would be September 2nd? Yes, Mr. President. All right, so we will continue that item Great, to uh, that time. Mr. Akala? Once again, you're not satisfied with putting liens on people's homes. Now you're putting them on their businesses. You don't want anybody to make a living but you want to collect taxes and taxes and taxes. How in the hell does that happen? Do you have some kind of a magic formula where you can get taxes out of nowhere? What, what kind of school did you guys go to? Political school? It's pure bullshit. All this is only inconvenience to the people. We, the people, of the world demand that you assholes remove yourselves from office because you Stay don't know the what subject. the hell you're doing. All you're doing is bothering people for everything they do. You have a business? Give me your money. You have a home? Give me your money. You have a, a candy bar? I'll take half of it. What the hell is wrong with you people? You need to go check a psychiatrist, a Stay political psychiatrist. You might want to go join Mr. Uh, Donald Trump. Okay, you're off the subject now again. So thank you so much, Mr. Akala. All right, uh, let's uh, prepare to vote. Let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 eyes. Mr. Harris Dawson. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm rising to ask for reconsideration uh, from yesterday's agenda, August 18th, item 1A, uh, and additionally asking for reconsideration of item 1E from today's agenda, August 19th. I'd like to continue both until September 2nd, two weeks. Okay, so let's have the first vote on, on the reconsideration. Let us, uh, Madam Clerk, open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 eyes, I think she said, not think, 13 eyes. Okay, that has been those two items. Uh, stop me if I'm wrong, Madam Clerk, will be continued until September 2nd, which is two weeks from today, correct? Yes, Mr. President. All right, now let's move forward with uh, general uh, public comment. I, do I have an Oscar uh, Mohammed and Sean Murphy in the uh, audience? Please come forward. <coughs> yes, uh, <coughs> my name is Oscar Mohammed. <coughs> uh, we'd like to bridge political responsibility. We live in a very, very irresponsible society. It seems like though we won't give a responsibility to what we share, we, we return it to, we give respons responsibility to the other people. We should clean up skid row. It's a very humane situation that African-American people live on year after year. And they're filled what we call skid row. That's the most destructive uh, community in America. You find no other community in America where the black homeless sleeps on the sidewalk continually. They do not uh, ask people for state money to, uh, you know, state money to help to help the homeless. But it seems like we have uh, Los Angeles, California, is a city of liberal. Liberal. It's the city of liberal. 
We should uh, more government, more in, more inequality, more government, more immoral laws, more 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 laws, more uh, more, more taxes. Thank you, Mr. Muhammad. Uh, Sean, followed by Mr. Previn, followed by Mr. Walsh. Good morning, Mr. President. Uh, still need to clean the storm drains. Uh, I hope the crosswalk's fixed on Lancashire and Moore Park. I'm going to be away from that area for a while. Uh, let's keep our storm drains clean. Okay, Mr. Previn, Mr. Walsh, whoever comes up first, Ms. Ramirez. John Walsh at HollywoodHighlands.org. They built a gallows for us uh, yesterday. You can see it. It was on the steps of City Hall. You can see the gallows and the hangman's noose. It didn't in any way uh, 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 intimidate us. Number one, last Wednesday, 1.15, there was a, the alarms went off. All of the, the uh, uh, people in the press room got their asses out of here. Everybody got their asses out of here. Mr. Uh, Ms. Kerkorian, this whole building was evacuated because we have a system, a fire life safety system that's ant ant antiquated. It's falling apart. We're in a fire trap. And the scumbags at the LA Times, starting with editorial writer Robert Greene, are keeping this quiet because they fear if people realize this is a fire trap, the Olympic Committee may not come here. This building is a fire trap. Thank you. And before, before Mr. Previn comes up, Ms. Martinez. Mr. President, I'd like to call item 47 forthwith for Mr. Kokorian. No problem. So item 47 forthwith, Mr. Kokori. I mean, Mr. Previn. That is a Freudian, uh, sir, it's Eric Previn, CD2, and that is a Freudian slip in the annals of City Hall. Um, it is Eric Previn from CD2, sir, and, you know, I have always tried to comport myself in a pleasant manner, even sometimes when I'm saying things you don't want to hear, but your obligation under the Brown Act and in the rules is to really hear from folks in the districts, and, you know, today 2D was a group in your district, sir, CD10, U.S. Metro Group, Inc. It's a janitorial company. They owed something like $944,000. Uh, you're leaning on them. You want to get that money for your residents. Now, in my district, CD2, we had a guy, Richard Weintraub, who had a big, fat transit occupancy tax lien, or, you know, money he owed, parking tax he owed. And we negotiated way down. Uh, we sued him as opposed to... So I don't get what's happening here. Are we doing the same kind of routine? And I spoke to the people in finance, Beverly Cook and PJ Shemtube, nice people. They run something called the Settlement Bureau. Now... Is it that you have to put money into the campaigns to get the good settlements, or is it something else? But something is fishy, sir. Thank you, Mr. Previn. Ms. Ramirez. Please don't lump me in with Mr. Arcala, cochino puerco asquerosa, who's not even a man but a pussy. I can't stand pussies. This, these filthy, uncivilized, jealous, nosy, vicious, racist, hate-mongering, wetbacks, and evil Latino chango gangbangers believe that they are entitled to everything in America. They have no legal standing in America. Stop rewarding these undesirable pigs and thieves. Having said that, ladies and gentlemen, let us boycott all movie studios, i.e. Paramount Studios, which I just saw their truck downstairs in front of City Council, um, and Universal Studios, Univision, Telemundo, DreamWorks, Warner Brothers, and all the other shenanigans. Uh, industries. They hire wetbacks and gangbangers. They make many military movies. And who do they hire? Not military veterans, but they hire wetbacks and gangbangers. And most of them harass and leave their filthy trash uh, in the surrounding areas and causing a lot of havoc. You don't want that trash. That's why we say vote for Donald Trump. Deport the bastards and clean up America. Restore America. God bless Donald Trump and the military. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh... Mr. Akala, followed by Mr. Herman. Donald Trump and you, fuck you, white trash. That's what you are. Donald Trump, go learn a little bit of history, you motherfucker. You know where you came from? You came from Europe, you asshole. 
You know where the Mexicans came from? They came from this continent. So Donald Trump, roll up all your billions and shove them up your ass a million times. No, a billion times. No, three billion times. Fuck you, Donald Trump. Fuck you, racist little bitch. Fuck everybody that's racist, including you, city attorney, <laughs> if you are. I don't know about Wesson. Are you racist? Eh, you're racist against the speakers. That's what you are. Stay on the subject, okay? Stay on the subject. Stay on the subject. Don't... Thank you, uh, Mr. Akala. Mr. Herman. I am unutterably opposed to discrimination of police, state, by your landmarks, Mr. Herman. You, Mr. Herman, disruptive. Your violation of my First Amendment right to say gently, fuck you. And my civil rights and this destruction of our social society by you to cause me to be disruptive and have me exit the building. Fuck you. By basic objection and opposition to this and all measures is therefore unconstitutional under the Brown Act. Fuck you, Herb Wesson. Herman, Herman, Herman. All you do is do M-O-I-U. Bitch, bitch, bitch. Just like a bitch, Herman. And that's good, because you make Herman listen to you, and so does the city attorney who looks like the Monopoly man. So have a good weekend, Nuri. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes uh, uh, general public comment. Mr. Kokorian. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. If people are finished acting like 12-year-olds during the middle of the city council meeting, I'd like to ask that... One second. Now you're 40, disrupting. Don't start that. I'd like to ask that item 47 be sent forthwith. Well, you know, Ms. Martinez handled that for you. It's oh, gone. Thank you. We can bring it back and send it again, but it's... if you. It's gone. Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, what's before this body? Council has motions for posting and referral. They are posted and they are referred. Uh, announcements. Everybody, please rise for adjourning motions. Please rise for adjourning motions. I will first look to uh, my right side. I do not see anything to my right. I now look to my left. Mr. Bonin. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, colleagues, I'd like to ask that we adjourn today in memory of a Pacific Palisades resident, uh, Yvonne Craig, who most of you may know as television's Batgirl uh, from the 19, uh, late 1960s uh, series starring uh, Adam West and Burt Ward. Uh, Yvonne uh, Craig, who lived in Palisades for a number of years, passed away uh, the other day after a long battle from breast cancer that metastasized to her liver. Uh, she was... Uh, 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 quite a uh, quite a celebrity. Uh, she actually created the character of Batgirl. It had not existed in the comic books until uh, that character was created for television, which is what gave that series its third and I think best season. Uh, she um, her website last night when I went to bed was up. It has crashed this morning because of so many people interested in her and her life. Uh, she was uh, 78 years old. Uh, she was uh, known for more than just the, the Batman television series. She started out as a, a ballet dancer and then uh, landed a part in um, a John Ford movie, The Young Land. Uh, she uh, then went on to uh, have a part in Star Trek. Mr. Uh, Koretz may remember this as a Star Trek fan. She played uh, the insane green Orion slave girl who wanted to kill Captain Kirk. Uh, over the span of years, she appeared as a guest star in many series, The Many Lives of uh, Dobie Gillis, Six Million Dollar Man, Land of the Giants, The Mod Squad, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, Love American Style, Emergency, and The Courtship of Eddie's Father, co-starring with the likes of Bing Crosby and Sal Mineo, Don Knotts, George Hamilton, Dwayne Hickman, Dennis Hopper, as well as Elvis Presley and James Coburn. After her acting career, she became a real estate broker, commercial and residential, in Pacific Palisades, and then went into the prepaid phone card business in recent years uh, with her sister. Uh, 
In 2000, she wrote a book of anecdotal memories from ballet to the Bat Cave and beyond, uh, which covered her life story. Uh, she continued doing voiceover work, uh, but uh, in addition to that, she traveled around the world. She liked adventure travel. Uh, she went back and forth to Africa with her husband seven times. Uh, but what really struck me about her life was that she was really involved with uh, social work and philanthropy. Uh, she was a public voice to support worker unions and equal pay for women, and was a strong advocate for free mammograms for women who cannot afford them. Uh, she was an advocate for education, involved in all sorts of different educational causes. Uh, she passed away at her home in Pacific Palisades on Monday, and I ask that we adjourn in her memory today. May she rest in peace. Well said. Mr. Koretz, do you remember from the Star Trek? I mean, we're putting you on the spot here. To be honest, I don't. <laughs> anyway, any more journey motions? Members, this meeting is adjourned. We now join our scheduled program in progress. Two moves a day. What we're witnessing today is uh, anywhere from five to six moves per truck. After years of discussion, the peel-off program emerged from a collaboration between a stevedoring company, marine terminal operators, major retailers, 